deep in the Nevada desert, there's a remote, secretive facility. This ground has sealed its place in history by repeatedly bearing the brunt of the most destructive weapon ever invented by humans. This is the Nevada test site. From 1951, the American government carried out almost a thousand nuclear tests here over four decades. A hundred of these, known as atmospheric shots, happened above ground. A limited number of visitors are allowed here every year, but because they still carry out classified work on the site, no one's allowed to take any pictures. No British television cameras have been allowed to film here before now. We've been given extremely rare access. Ernie Williams has worked at the site since the 1950s. He's watched 80 of the atmospheric shots firsthand. He would often join scientists and visiting VIPs at these benches several miles from the mushroom clouds. The first time I saw the first one, I uh, broke into a dead sweat because I knew it was a very awesome type thing. He still oozes pride about the work that he and his colleagues did here. Did it frighten you at all? I was never frightened. I can't emphasize enough to you how, uh, how important it was to be a worker of the test site and being a witness to an atmospheric shot. But uh, it was a great, uh, great time. Buildings of various materials went up. A million dollars worth of equipment was installed, including light flight mannequins. The site was established soon after the end of the Second World War against the fear of an all-out attack from the Soviet Union. As the Cold War took hold, America designed and built its nuclear arsenal. They took the crude nuclear weapons that had just been dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki and honed their destructive power in test after test. Sometimes what they found was surprising. This house was one of several built as part of a fake town to help scientists understand what would happen to an ordinary home during a nuclear blast. When it was built, it was filled with furniture and mannequins to mimic a typical 1950s home. And then, about a mile that way, they let off a nuclear bomb. The paint ended up peeling, the windows were blown in, but as you can see, the house remained standing. America's own soldiers were drafted in to witness the tests up close. Officers wanted to see how troops might react to such extreme explosions on the battlefield. They were told to crouch in a trench a few miles from the blast. Soldiers like Lamont Davis. Knocked us all flat, knocked us back in the trench, and that's when you could look anywhere you wanted to, and, and people, tears were running down the face, and you're just shaking. You know, this, it just, I've never in my life experienced anything like that before or since. And I can remember I had blood running out of both ears, out of both nostrils, and uh, I couldn't see. This was, and still is, a strange place. Not least because the glitz and glamour of Las Vegas is only 65 miles away. People came from all over the country to see the mushroom clouds. They'd watch from the roofs of their hotels and cars. There was even a Miss Atomic bomb. It is considered one of the 100 most famous advertising photographs in the United States. Robert Friedrichs has worked at the Nevada test site for 30 years. He's documented the cultural fallout Robert? of the nuclear program. Come Hi, here. thank you very much. As advertisers celebrated and made money from the nuclear tests in the 1950s, they created a strange world of atomic merchandise. Playing cards, sewing needles, Christmas tree ornaments that had the atom on it. And people bought that stuff like crazy. Not everyone found the atomic explosions so exciting. In towns like St. George in the state of Utah, which were downwind of the test site, 
people found the nuclear program much more troubling. Claudia Peterson remembers Maybe seeing atomic blasts as a child growing up near St. George. I was with my brother out in the garden and um, this big ball red flame came up over the horizon. And I ran to the house to tell my mother there was a flying saucer. Our neighbors had sheep. And I remember thinking during lambing season that it was normal to have piles of dead lambs with two heads or no legs or just piles of dead baby lambs. People in the town started to get sick. When she was a child, two of Claudia's school friends died of cancer, and her father was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I thought that was probably the hardest thing I was ever going to go through, but it, it wasn't even a tip of the iceberg for, for what's happened in our family. Although it's hard to be certain, Claudia believes that several generations of her family were fatally harmed by the radioactive dust churned up by the atmospheric tests. Her daughter Bethany was just three when she was diagnosed with neuroblastoma. At the same time, Claudia's sister succumbed to melanoma. So I came home, um, told my sister goodbye. We took her off life support. Yeah. Her Youngest child was six months old. Her oldest was like 14 at the time. And a month later, our daughter died. After decades of campaigning from the so-called downwinders, the US government did pay out some compensation. Today, the threat of a nuclear attack from the Soviet Union is long gone. But the Nevada test site is still in active service, working against new threats to the US. There were plenty of places on site where we weren't allowed to get close or fill. They maintain the American nuclear stockpile here, and they test technology to combat nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. We are involved in the counterterrorism program with the Homeland Security Agency. We do things here for the nation that we can't do anyplace else. The story of this place will always remain controversial. For me personally, the, um, sorry, the legacy of the Nevada test site is heartache. For me personally, it's a lot of heartache. Site workers like Robert, there's a cautious pride in what they did. I also recognize the tremendous costs of the programs. The downside is, what other option did we have? While some argue that there were other options, many others still believe this desert was the battleground from which America won the Cold War. And the site's historical importance is undeniable. But over 70 years, they've developed nuclear bombs here that are a thousand times more powerful than the one dropped on Hiroshima. An ever-present reminder of the long shadow the nuclear threat continues to cast over our world.